Good evening to all my wonderful viewers out there and welcome back to another drop list video, the series where I cover all the items that are releasing in a specific week for various different streetwear brands. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering everything that is dropping in week seven of Palace's Spring 2023 collection. <laughs> well, we're going to start covering it, guys. I mean, I just did the streetwear talk video talking about the collab that's dropping this week. We got to do the next best thing, which is cover everything releasing in that week as well. So week seven, collaborative pieces, seasonal pieces. I'm keen to see it all. We'll cover the release details, both of those two things, and my thoughts and opinions on the individual pieces and the week as a whole. Now, how are we going to do that? You know what I'm going to say. We're going to be using a Max Merch More Instagram post. We'll head on over to that post now and we'll start covering the release details for week seven we are fantastic so palace spring 23 week 7 all items are expected to release friday march 17th 2023 11 a.m eastern standard time 11 a.m gmt time in store and online it's releasing the day later on the 18th for japan and china 11 a.m chinese standard time 11 a.m japanese standard time it's also dropping well i should sorry i should say the Porter Yoshida collaborative pieces are releasing on Porter's page in Japan and Korea. When? I think either Friday, 11 a.m. respective time zones or Saturday, respective time zones. I'm a little unsure on the Porter Yoshida drop time on their web store, but I know for the Palace one. So I can give you some certainty there. Um, yeah, uh, beyond that. I don't know any more details to do with the Porter uh, release details on their on their store. But if you guys have any further questions about when and where it's dropping, comment section below. I'll try and help you out the best I can. Basically, the thing to remember, 11 a.m. on Friday for most of the world, 11 a.m. for Japan and China on the Saturday. But uh, yeah, now that we've covered all the, the release details to do with week seven, we've got to get into these pieces. Let's kick it off and start covering page one of week seven. All right, so starting off page one, we have the fleece face warmer beanie in the mocha, gray and black. <laughs> this is a wild piece. It's wild to see a palace beanie attached with a face warmer and just litter. It's like the smallest like slit for your eyes. It's just like a little, little visor. I want to see how it looks on person. I think it'd be absolutely wild. I just don't think I could wear it with like any outfits and Australia does not get that cold where something like this could be a regular thing that I'd pull out. But uh, I can see a lot of you guys maybe in the UK or US getting around it. It's a pretty wild piece. Uh, yeah, the colors are all right. Palace branding's okay. I'd love to hear if you're going to be picking this one up. It's a pretty wild piece there. Moving on, we have the Mona Lisa beanie in the purple, black, and brown. Now on the other side of this beanie, it's just single colored as the background and it just has palace written on the other side. That's it, so it's a half and half beanie. I I just think this looks so whack. Why would you put the Mona Lisa on something that's like, it's gonna move so much. The fabric's gonna spread so much. Not everyone has the same size noggin. Like if you're like me and you you know, got a huge noggin, if I put the Mona Lisa on my head, it's gonna stretch out and look how warped and how wacky. This is designed for like a certain type of head and I can't even generalize what type of head because it's just gonna have to be one where the graphic doesn't look super distorted. It's just a weird concept, man. They should have applied it to other pieces. I don't know why this is a thing. And in the comments of this post, there's a couple of people saying Mona Lisa beanie kind of fire though. Bro, no. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. I just think it's just so whack. Now, here is the Porter Yoshida pieces being showcased here. We've got the collaborative jacket. I'm not a huge fan of this like ink splotch looking uh, all over print, but I really like the design of the jacket and this little pocket here on the left is a Porter Yoshida bag that can detach from the jacket itself. Uh, if you want to see that in more detail, Streetwear Talk video. Go check out the Streetwear Talk video where we talk about the collab, but it's a cool premise. It's just the all over print design isn't for me. I really just wish they stuck with one color or made two of them, one black, one dark gray. That's just my thoughts on it. We've got a bag, many bags in this collab releasing as Porta Yoshida is a bag and luggage brand. Collaborative hoodie, Triferg on the front, uh, sorry, Triferg on the back, 
little bits of co-branding on the front comes in these two colors and i think a third color as well collaborative tea with a um uh is a bellboy i can't remember the name of the occupation but holding luggage with palace written in it and then the porter branding is in the palace graphic in the back they switched it up man the graphics are okay it's it's nothing too wild for me we've got the bucket hat the collaborative bucket hat being showcased with the dual branding there again outside of the jacket the collab for me is eh, but it may appeal to more people you know aesthetically there might be some pieces here that work well with you i just think a lot of it wouldn't work well with me um what's my favorite piece on page one Probably one I wouldn't wear, but I think that fleece face warmer beanie is just so wild. <laughs> just a wild, wild piece, man. Uh, let me know what your favorite piece is on page one, but we'll move on now and we'll check out page two. We got more of the collaborative pieces being showcased. We got the uh, collaborative palace P cap. I actually like this and the texture of the P looks really grainy and rocky. Uh, we've got the backpack. We've got the tote bag. We've got this other bag we've got the uh triferg bag which we've seen before uh well like the idea of like the triferg bag at least um yeah the bags are all right i'm just like yeah okay see, see look it's putting me to sleep it's putting me to sleep that and maybe it's like quite late at night but yeah i don't know i wasn't blown away by this stuff the hat was all right though next we got the stitch up drop shoulder shirt very simple contrasting stitching uh, drop shoulder shirt it's got the palace embroidery on the back across the shoulders there it comes in a black a navy and a brown all with that embroidery across the back it's all right it's like a nice little over shirt but unless it's like going cheap i wouldn't pay huge money for it we've got the peak fleece shorts coming in a black gray and a brown that of course is to match the peak fleece jacket one of the big heavy hitting pieces this week where it's got you know a little hole to peek out of but the rest of it is there <laughs> just like that i actually really like the paneling done on this uh fleece jacket it's not just a fleece jacket it's got like some added little details here to break it up it looks a lot nicer on body when palace posted about it but uh yeah no solid pieces um just not something that i would look to pick up my fleeces are generally like all over print crazy ones not really ones like this Lastly, we have the waffle long sleeve, very simple piece. It's a waffle piece with um, a palace, uh, like that Snickers palace logo on the left chest there. I think it's nice. Textured long sleeve, works with a lot of outfits, simple palace branding there. I can't complain about it, but um, yeah, well, that's everything releasing on page two. I think my favorite piece on page two is still gonna go to that waffle shirt there. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on anything releasing on page two there of week seven. Let's go check out page three. All right, so we're getting, I think this is a pin. I think this is a pin. It looks like a pin. I think it's a collaborative pin. And it looks like we're getting the waffle long sleeve as well as the uh, last piece there. I think it's nice in the green. I think it's nice in the soft white. I think the singular colors are nice. I'm not hugely on the duck camo, but I know you guys would get around it. Now, from what I know as well, I don't know, Max Merchmore hasn't posted about it, but I thought there was a uh, pocket tee with that same palace logo on the left breast they're releasing this week. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Max Merchmore is generally pretty accurate, but I swear I've seen it being advertised that there's a pocket tee with the same graphic they're releasing this week. But I could be wrong. I'll trust Max Merchmore there. So there we go, guys. That is everything releasing in uh, week seven. Those are the three pages. It's mainly mostly a collaborative week, but we got some beanies. We got some... Um, some fleece pieces releasing this week. I think my favorite piece this week is actually just gonna to go to the waffle long sleeve. I think that's just a really nice, simple piece. A textured long sleeve with a little palace logo on it. I can't complain about that. Very simple. I think that'd be my favorite piece this week, but maybe you're insulted by that. <laughs> maybe the Mona Lisa beanie really be hidden for you. Or maybe you really like the, uh, the peak fleece pieces. I don't know. I'd love to hear thoughts and opinions on any of the individual pieces from week seven or the week as a whole down in that comment section below. Well, there we go, guys. That is everything covered for week seven. We covered the release details, March 17th or 18th, Friday or Saturday, depending on your region. Uh, we covered the collaborative and seasonal pieces releasing in this week, and we covered all my thoughts and opinions on it. Now, how do I feel about the whole week in general? 
yeah, it's okay. There wasn't too much here that's really speaking for me aesthetically. Like, I, I'm looking at my wardrobe, there's not a lot that I could buy that would really, like, mix in with it well and would be really versatile with the rest of my wardrobe, but there were some nice pieces here and there. I just su wasn't super blown away by week seven, but, like, if you're super into fleeces, you're super into uh, Porter Yoshida, this is going to be the week for you. We'll all have various different opinions on it. I'd love to hear if you guys are picking up something from week seven. Like, what are you picking up? What are you feeling? What are you not? Let me know what you're going to be scoring from this week down in that comment section below. And of course, if you guys want to keep covering all the upcoming uh, releases Palace is doing, all the upcoming collabs, you got to give me the three indicators that I will nag you forever for, which is a like on this video, a comment in that comment section down below, and that best indicator of them all, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. As mentioned in previous uploads, we're trying to hit that subscriber milestone of 3595 before the end of the month. We are very, very close, guys. Hopefully, with your guys' continuous support, we can reach that milestone before the end of the month. But that is everything I have to say about week seven, guys. I wish you the best of luck if you are going for something from this week. I'd love to hear if you're going for something collaborative or seasonal. Regardless, I hope you manage to pick it up in the size and color you are after. But until the next Palace video, until the next Streetwear Talk video, until the next Droplist video in general, I'll catch you later.